rocket fuel and the car with gas because we're going to Starkville for the state championship game, St. Al Cathedral. Get ready, get pumped. It's the season finale of High School Lowdown. Corey Dunkel, Ernest Boker, let's go. All right, only one game on the docket this week, and it is probably the biggest one here in decades in Warren yeah. County, at least two decades anyway. Uh, St. Aloysius versus Cathedral, uh, Class 1A state championship game up in Starkville, Mississippi State, Davis Wade Stadium, 11 a.m. Friday morning. Uh, it'll be on the radio, 101.3 TV, WLOO -O -O TV, uh, Channel 11 on Vicksburg Video. Check us out online, Twitter, uh, VIX Post Sports. Uh, and now let's talk about the game now that we've told you where to find it. Uh, obviously, this is huge. Two arch rivals, uh, biggest game in the history of a rivalry that spans probably 75 years. Yeah. Uh, what can you say about it? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, th this is the biggest game that's come through these two schools, maybe ever, uh, especially in this rivalry. Uh, and these are two teams that don't really like each other. It's a friendly rivalry. Mm -hmm. uh, in Ernest's article in the Vicksburg Post this week, he says it's more of a uh, – not a blood feud, but a blood brother rivalry, mm -hmm. and I think that really kind of captures the essence of it. These guys talk about how they know each other, they're friends, uh, BJ and, and Cathedral's coach are friends as mm -hmm. well, uh, but at the end of the day on Friday morning at 11 o'clock, all those friendships get put to the side, and it's going to be a battle. A uh, lot of interesting matchups, mm -hmm. and I think the biggest one, and maybe you could elaborate a little bit more, uh, is that St. Al offensive line. Uh, that's going to go up against Cathedral's uh, defensive line. I think that's a matchup that really is going to probably set the tone of the game early on. Right, it's kind of what St. Al's done all year. They really just manhandle people. Yeah. Uh, they play, of course, these two teams played to be the first game of the season. Cathedral won that one 42-31, but if, if you watch St. Al, they got a lot better oh, yeah. real quick after that game. It took them about th two, maybe three weeks, uh, and then they just started trucking people. And the offensive line has been a big part of that. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Bash Brown, Drake Dorbeck, Ben Brown, Jacob Kitchens, and uh, Josh Price, yeah. uh, the primary starting five. Bryce Richards also mi mixes in there. Uh, a couple of tight ends, but we'll be here all day if we list everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, when you got that kind of size and the guys, that, the, the, the intelligence of those guys, too, they know what they're doing. They're, yeah. they, they're experienced. They're huge. They can just manhandle people. Yeah, and they're all multi-year starters, or at least most of them. Uh, and, and that experience and that cohesiveness – you just can't really put a, a statistical figure on it. I mean, right. they just know what each other are going to do. And then they open up holes for Michael Harris, who's definitely, in my opinion, the most fun guy and the most explosive player in Warren County. And what he does and how they set the tone, I mean, it seems like St. Al scores on their first possession a ton. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I talked to a lot of the guys on offensive line yesterday, and they said that, you know, setting the tone, that first hit, that first play, just like they did against Coffeyville, mm -hmm. where Michael Harris busts off, what was it, a 59-yard, 69-yard yeah. touchdown uh, on that first play. I mean, that's what they are looking to do. And, I mean, mm -hmm. if they do that, set the tone early and establish a run game, I think St. Al has a great shot at taking home their first state championship in, what, three decades? Right, yeah. Uh, well, ever first time. Oh yeah, the first, first, first time, time ever. Here. So yeah, in, in three days. But you know, you, you know, we also we talk about the line too. I, I go back to a few weeks ago when they were playing Greenville St. Joe. And they were in the fourth quarter, and uh, St. Joe scored just enough to keep it interesting. Just enough where it's saying now couldn't quite. You know, they they had long Probably. taken their starters out. Uh, you know, they finally got tired of, of letting. Greenville St. Joe hang around. So instead of bringing DeMichael in, instead of bringing quarterback Connor Smith in, they brought the line back. Right. Crank out a few first downs, let's go home. Right. And, uh, you know, so that, that says a lot about their line. And, and also, those guys also double as the defensive line, which is a, a really an underrated aspect of this matchup. Yeah. Um, you know, we've had two teams that have combined for 1,200 points this year. Um, you know, that scored 73 and had 840 yards the first time they played. And really have not given up a whole lot since then. Yeah. Um, you know, you look at uh, you know the last I think seven games. I think St. Al's ha has not really given up about maybe thirty or thirty-five points in, in the first half before garbage time. Right. Uh, Cathedral shut down a really good Peelahatchee running game a couple weeks ago in the playoffs. Held Nana wide about thirty yards in the second half last week. So it really wouldn't surprise me. Everybody's expecting to shoot another shootout. It, it really wouldn't surprise me if this game is kind of low scoring. Yeah, it really wouldn't surprise me either. And another underrated aspect of St. Al, I think, that's going to really play into this matchup is how turnover they're 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 turnover hawks. Mm -hmm. You know, they Connor Smith, uh, who is the quarterback, who's rushed and passed for over a thousand yards. He also has nine picks. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's ridiculous. You know, mm -hmm. and the fact that they just find the ball, they get turnovers. How many? I think they created what six turnovers last week against yeah. Coffeeville. Yeah. I mean, that's just, uh, I mean, that's an underrated part of their game. But they also, they give up a couple of turnovers. So I think that matchup is going to be really key. And if they can stay in the, the plus range and turnover margin, 
got a really good shot. Right. Yeah, with offense, the, the number of offense fumbles, we don't have that stat. Mm -hmm. But uh, Connor's thrown six interceptions this year, and they have 48 turnovers on defense that they force, multiple turnovers in every single game they <laughs> right, play. Right, right. Uh, so you figure they're, you know, if they fumbled a dozen times, concert, you know, probably on the high end, uh, their turnover margin's plus 30. Yeah, they, yeah which is ridiculous. Yeah, bit. especially for high school. And, uh, you know, you, you get two, three turnovers a game in high school, that's going to win you a lot of ball games. Oh, yeah. Those are going to turn into points pretty quick. Yeah, especially with the offense like St. Al that does the most with their opportunities. They're not a team that gets in the red zone and stalls. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they punch in when they need to, especially with that running back core that they have four mm -hmm. or five guys mm -hmm. that they can rely on, even, you know, fre a freshman guy yeah. that they can rely on if they really need to. Yeah. Um, but, you know. To Michael Harris, I think it all comes down to him uh, mm -hmm. and that offensive line and what St. Al can do against Cathedral's defense, which is really strong. And that BJ Coach B.J. Smith Hart said uh, is going to be one of the most physical ones that they face so far. Right, and of course, you know, we say we could say they haven't seen an offensive like offense like this either side, but they have. You know, right. they right. played in the first right. game. Right, right, right. Um, so it, it's going to be interesting too to see what adjustments they've made from that first game. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about St. Al got a lot better. Yeah. You know, they they kind of came out of the gate the first game against Cathedral, the second game against Pisgah, they were a little slow, and then they picked it up from there. They're, they're not the same team if you've watched them all year. They're not the same team they were in week one. They're much better. Uh, Cathedral obviously is, you know, they're 13 and one as well. They've obviously been good all year. They've gotten better as the year goes along. So, you know, whatever new wrinkles those teams can throw out there, uh, whoever can execute the best, it's a cliche, but it's really, that's what it's gonna come down to is, you know, we talk about the turnovers, who limits those, uh, who can move the football, who can keep the other team's offense off the field. Right. Uh, St. Al has a, has a tendency to hit the big play, so it's going to be interesting if they hit too many of those, give the ball right back to Cathedral, you know, we could end up with that 45-31 game. My whole point about a low-scoring game would be shot out the window. <laughs> right. And the mindset of this team, uh, I think that's something that a lot of people, they might not be able to see because, you know, they're not inside the locker room or, uh, uh, you know, on the practice field on a daily basis. But these guys are loose. Mm -hmm. It's not a state – they're not nervous. This is not a state championship pressure field situation to them. They're joking around with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, you watch St. Allen. I've seen, you know – a lot of St. Al games this year, you don't expect them to lose. You really don't. Uh, and, and I think they've taken that mindset and ran with it. So they're not they're not going in to put up a good showing. They're not enjoying the ride. They want to win, and they truly believe that they're going to Starkville to win the game. Right. I mean, there's no doubt. They're one of the best teams in 1A. I think, yeah. I think we got to last week, we had the four best teams. I think now we have the two best teams. Yeah. And, you know, whoever wins this game, there's not going to be a doubt that they are the best team. You know, whether it's St. Now or whether it's Cathedral, you know, they're, they're both outstanding. They're both deserving to be here. Both, we'll both be deserving champions. But, you know, you talk about St. Now has the swagger. They do. Yeah, you know, the, the confident swagger, not the bad swagger. Right, right. They're, they're right. not cocky. They're not, you know, they're not overbearing. Not at all. They're, they're just, they know what they can do, and they, and they do it. And every man in that locker room really takes care of their business and does their job. And that's, that's a rare thing. You know, you, the best teams have that. And you know, you, if you you know, I know you're, this is your first season here at Warren County to follow football. If you follow them the last three years, you've really kind of seen that develop. Uh, you know, Connor, when he was a starter as a sophomore, he was throwing lollipop passes. They were awful. You know, he was not a good passer. And he just put put his nose to the grindstone and worked in the offseason. Came out last summer was throwing darts all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, looked like a completely different quarterback. The the linemen we talked about. You know, they they were raw when they came in. Took their lungs, figured out what they were doing. Now they're they're dominant the whole line. Yeah. Uh, DeMichael, you know, had never really run the ball before this year. Boom, he you know he becomes a playmaker. So it's it's just everybody stepping into a new role, figuring out what they need to do, and just doing it and getting finding a way to get the job done. Yeah, that maturation process has happened. This is the time when they cash in. It's going to be a great matchup, and if you are going, uh, gear up because it's going to be a great game at 11 o'clock at Davis Wade Stadium. Right, and gear up uh, with possibly some rain here. I think there's a 70% <laughs> chance of rain yeah. on Friday. So, uh, and we don't we don't usually make predictions here, but uh, you know we we'll try to avoid that and keeps us from being called to account. To be honest with you, <laughs> but uh, what, what's your prediction for this one? Oh, put me on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a great game. I think uh might struggle a little bit at first to score both teams as they kind of get that a uh, little bit of the pressure and, and kind of suit in. But I think at the end of the day, St. Al's in the trenches is going to be the difference, and I think St. Al's going to win the game. We'll say uh, 34-28. I'm going to go similar. I think, you know, I think I'm going to go with St. Al. I think they figure it out. Uh, Cathedral is an outstanding team, like we said, not to take anything away from them. Right. Uh, but I think I think Saint Al has a few extra weapons that right now. They, yeah. I think they're a little more balanced. Uh, you know, Cathedral 
you know, they're, they're good. I, I don't think they maybe have quite the depth that, that St. Al has. And uh, I'm going to say uh, Casey, Casey Griffith is going to be a difference. You know, the, we don't talk about the kicker, but 75 PATs in a row is right. incredible. Really Shanks is. a 21-yarder last week. Got you, you know, Casey. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go uh, St. Al 35, Cathedral 21. Cool. With, with, with possibly a late touchdown to, to seal a much closer game than, than that. But, yeah. But uh, so, as he said, you know, you gear up, rain gear, uh, if you go Thursday, watch it on TV, uh, watch it on, listen to it on the radio, follow us on Twitter. Uh, Vix Post Sports, VIX Post Sports, or follow us on Facebook. We'll be all over the game. And uh, thanks for watching the season. We'll sit and uh, let's wrap it up. Yeah. Thanks for tuning into this edition and all of the editions of High School Lowdown this season. Uh, for lot for the live score on Friday morning, at game starts at 11 a.m. Check us out on Twitter at Vix Post Sports, VIX P O S T S P O R T S. Uh, follow us on Facebook. We'll be doing live scoring throughout the game, throughout the day. Uh, check us out online after the game at VicksburgPost.com, the traditional spelling. Uh, our new stand edition won't be out till Saturday morning, but we'll have even more coverage there. All the St. Out coverage you can shake a stick at. So, uh, th again, thank you so much for checking us out this season. For Corey Gunkel, Summer and his we're signing off. We'll see you in 2015.